It's currently about quarter to 11 a.m. Uh, Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022. And um, I'm currently sitting up here in Canada visiting some family. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about something that happened uh, pretty recently. Uh, I deleted Twitter off of my phone. Now, that's not to say that I have gotten rid of Twitter completely. I still have my account and, you know, I have like a professional presence on Twitter. Um, so that stuff still exists, but, um, but I deleted the app off of my phone. I want to talk about it. I mean, I don't know when you're going to be watching this, but, uh, uh, around this time, um, you should know that, uh, Elon Musk completed the purchase of Twitter. Uh, whether that was <laughs> uh, whether that was forced or you know uh, he, he w did it willingly, who knows? But um, he he purchased Twitter, and uh, Twitter underwent a tumultuous couple of weeks, right? And um, you know I was there for it. I I was on Twitter and I was kind of watching how things unfolded. I will have you know that I did not do delete Twitter because of Elon Musk um, taking over Twitter, right? Clearly, because right? I waited like a couple weeks to actually delete Twitter. No, the, the reason why I deleted Twitter uh, goes beyond that. I've said this before um, in my videos, but I think Twitter is an absolute cesspool. It, it is, it's terrible. My, my, my original sort of interaction with Twitter was some years ago, um, I, I can't remember what um, really got me on it. Um, my, my brother-in-law, I knew, used Twitter, and he kind of uh, sort of opened me to the idea of, of using Twitter. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, he used it in somewhat of a sort of um, professional type of uh, uh, use case scenario. And, you know, and, and I did too. <laughs> I, I, that's kind of how I got into it. Um, but, you know, uh, the sort of professional use of Twitter is a relatively small <laughs> area within Twitter, right? And, uh, and so, you know, I, I, I've uh, sort of branched out and used it for other things too. And, uh, and uh, like, I think for most people, they use Twitter for things like entertainment, right? Uh, and uh, I remember that uh, when I first started using Twitter a number of years ago, one of the things I really liked doing was, you know, watching professional sports and sort of following along, <laughs> uh, reading people's comments on various uh, basketball games um, or hockey games or whatever, and, and just reading people's uh, comments on Twitter and just uh, <laughs> and just kind of enjoying the trash talk going back and forth. Pretty harmless fun, you know? Um, and that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, but then, you know, about a year ago, Russia invaded Ukraine. And uh, Twitter became sort of my, my way to really uh, access uh, the sort of minute-to-minute -minute ongoing in, in that whole conflict. Um, so that's kind of when I really started using Twitter like a lot. Because, um, uh, you know, the, here was this uh, cataclysmic historic event that was happening. And I, I, I was just filled with this sense of dread and anxiety and so I was constantly what I call doom scrolling I was just scrolling to see like what what's happening you know what's happening what's what's humanity's response to this and um, and it became a bit of an addiction if I'm being honest like it um, it I, I spent just an unhealthy amount of time scrolling through and, and just trying to eat up uh, what I'm call I'm gonna I'm gonna call it news, okay? And I, I, but I do have issues with that, and, and I'll get to that in a second. But but I, I, I just I was scrolling Twitter for news. Now uh, you know that war has dragged on and on, and you know my sort of 
Uh, well, number one, that the sort of the news feed from that conflict has certainly slowed, and so my uh, sort of desire to scroll through that news feed has has also cooled. But you know, it's uh, the, the habit of scrolling through Twitter hasn't gone away. And I think that's a problem. I, I, I find myself just spending a lot of time scrolling Twitter. And, um, you know, there's certainly the professional use of Twitter, which is fine, right? But, like, nobody spends that much time doing that. Uh, but, but, you know, the, the other stuff, like the more entertainment stuff and, and the news stuff on Twitter, there, it's a lot more addictive. And, and, and so you do tend to find yourself spending a fair bit of time scrolling through that. Uh, and what I found is that, well, I've said this already, Twitter is an absolute cesspool. Uh, and, it, and that's fine if you, all you're doing is going to Twitter for entertainment, you know, you're going for like, uh, you know, things that don't really matter. And I count sports uh, within that group. I mean, sports, professional sports anyway, certainly is just entertainment. But where things really get murky is when you scroll Twitter for news. You know, I I kind of I kind of naively thought that it was an okay source for news because after all, you know, the many legitimate news companies are are putting stuff out on Twitter, right? You can see CNN and MSNBC, Fox. Uh, uh, the New York Times, all kinds of news outlets are on Twitter, right? But the problem is that uh, outside of those sort of traditional news outlets, they're also now, I'm also being exposed to all kinds of other quote-unquote news outlets that I, I don't recognize. But the thing is, they, they, they make themselves look like the other news outlets, traditional news outlets like CNN. Why? Because it's very easy, <laughs> right? It's very easy to post uh, what 256 uh, character um, uh, tweet with with a picture, right? Give yourself a very official sounding name like uh, News Today or whatever, and you can look very legitimate. And so well, that's something I was noticing was that there were a lot of news outlets, quote-unquote news outlets, um, that I don't recognize that's uh, uh, basically spouting things, headlines that look like news. And slowly and, and sort of uh, unconsciously, you, you start reading those things, and, and that stuff starts getting internalized as news. But the reality of it is, I don't know that any of this any of these other news outlets are legitimate. In fact, I highly doubt that they're legitimate. And some of those uh, news headlines do seem very suspicious. They seem very sensationalized or they seem very uh, opinionated, right? They can be very left-leaning or very right-leaning. And uh, they tend to cause a, a sort of strong emotions whether that be fear or anxiety or or anger and um, that's kind of when I started to realize like Twitter is not a good place for news it's fine for entertainment but you should not turn to Twitter for news which is very weird to say right because like I already mentioned plenty of legitimate news outlets post on Twitter. But I think, I think those news outlets have done themselves a, a great disservice by doing so. I, I recognize that traditional news outlets are, are struggling, you know, uh, they're struggling to stay afloat financially and they're always looking for ways to um, stay relevant and, and make money. And it seems like Twitter and advertising uh, is is the new way to go about it, but I'd argue that in doing so, they have they have actually led to the delegitimize. Well, oh, geez, that's a hard word to say, but delegitimizing of their of the whole 
journalism industry, and also made it made it much easier for conspiracy news websites um, to 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 look like legitimate news outlets, uh, and it's really contributed to uh, to kind of the uh, the sort of I, w- I want to call it downfall, decline in society's trust in journalism and news. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's had a very negative imp- uh, impact on journalism, and I can spend more time talking about this in a separate video. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I did want to tie it back to this whole uh, Elon Musk acquisition of Twitter because a few days ago, I think Elon Musk did tweet that Twitter is the uh, sort of uh, f- what is it? What do you call it? Open sourcing of news. Which to me sounds like just the most ridiculous thing ever. I think I think that might be surprising because for some people, that sounds like a good thing, right? Because they're they're used to the idea of open source software being free and you know uh, being good for the people. And then there, and then you know, news is something that you also want to be freely available to the people. And so, if you put those two things, in, it should be a good thing, right? Um, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it sounds like it should be a good thing, but it's absolutely not a good thing. A lot of because if you use that logic in other areas, it sounds ridiculous too. Like if I said open sourcing um, medicine. Does that sound legitimate to you? Like if you go to the hospital and you can be treated by whoever, you know, who knows what their medical background is, who knows their, you know, if uh, they have a legitimate degree or not? No, that doesn't make sense. Also, the idea of open sourcing uh, justice. Also a ridic- ridiculous concept. Sure, it might sound like a good idea, open source being a good thing and justice being a good thing. You put them together is a good thing, right? No, not really, because if you know anything about the the way the justice system works, um, you know people, uh, people, people as a whole, society as a whole, the, the, do not vote to com, com, convict a suspect, right? It's only the the jury, the people who have been selected to participate in that judicial process, who vote. Why? Because. The evidence that get presented in a trial have to be vetted to, be, to, to make sure that it's legitimate, uh, that it's not uh, obtained through uh, uh, you know ways that can t- can taint its uh, usability. Right? It has to be it has to be uh, admissible in court. And then the people in that jury are the people who also hear about all of the details about that case. And so they are actually properly informed to make the decision about the suspect, right? Whereas anybody outside of that that, um, courtroom, you know, just the average (laughs) person, you know, out in the world, no matter how much they tweet about it and how much of an opinion they have about it, they do not have a legitimate opinion. Uh, Sure, they're free to their opinion, but because they do not have all of the details of the case, um, unlike the, the jury members, they do not get a say in you know, whether to convict a suspect or not, right? So, so, so basically all of that to say that the idea of open sourcing and justice system also doesn't make sense. So similarly, open sourcing journalism or open sourcing news is also not a good idea. You know, and Twitter is, is not, News. Um, people who are who have traditionally participated in news and journalism have a degree in journalism, and they need to have their sources and facts uh, checked and verified. Now, I'm not saying that the whole, the whole journalism industry is squeaky squeaky clean. Right, with absolutely no bias and no uh, nefarious sort of uh, uh, under the table dealings or whatever. Certainly not. I don't think any industry, to be honest, can be completely 
free of that. But just because a system as it exists is not completely clean doesn't necessarily mean that that system should be abandoned, right, for something else. Because very likely the thing that you're replacing it with is even worse, right? So my example is open sourcing the news. That is way, way worse because now people can just say whatever they want without fact checking or, or vetting any facts. There's no common pool of facts for us to all uh, uh, agree on, you know? And so the, so the, so none of the evidence being presented in this court of public opinion is vetted, right? Anybody can just say whatever they want. And nobody is, I shouldn't say nobody, but like very commonly the people who speak the loudest, these conspiracy theorists, all they know about any subject matter is whatever they read on the internet. That's not a good thing because none of that stuff is vetted. So anyway, extremely troublesome. I can't believe that uh, Elon Musk thinks that that is a good idea. It does make me think that he is not as uh, smart as he likes to believe he is, and as many of his fans want to believe he is, because that, that concept is absolutely ludicrous. Open sourcing the news. That's absolutely ludicrous. Um, now, some people still want to believe that he's playing some kind of 4D chess and that him proclaiming these outlandish things is somehow his way of sort of drumming traffic, drumming up traffic for Twitter and hence increasing its value. And, and you know, he's, he's going he's, he's gonna, to he's gonna make money on, off of this. I don't give a shit. <laughs> right at the end of the day I don't give a shit and I don't I don't understand why his supporters care so much about his net worth who the hell cares why do you care about how much Elon Musk is worth how, why do you care how much he makes off of this whole Twitter deal it doesn't affect you if you were poor to start with and but you support Elon Musk Elon Musk can make another hundred billion dollars wouldn't affect you anyway so I don't understand why people are so um, vocal about supporting him uh, and using his his business uh, successes uh, as a or his, or his net worth uh, as a measure of his intelligence. None of that stuff matters, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, I think he's doing something that's very damaging to society, and that in of itself should make you. Um, Take pause. Yeah, at the end of the day, I think whatever he's doing, it's just bad for society. And um, uh, I just didn't want to watch it anymore. So I've gone ahead and deleted Twitter off of my phone. Uh, and instead, I've actually brought the Apple News app <laughs> back out uh, onto on my home screen. Now, I know some of you are thinking, Good riddance, who cares? See ya, bye bye, right? As though they've won some kind of victory. Uh, again, I didn't actually delete my Twitter profile, I just removed the app because I didn't like doom scrolling on Twitter anymore. But, but I'll just have you know whether you are on Twitter or not, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, you could stay, you could leave. None of that stuff matters. You th you might think it matters to Elon Musk, but I can guarantee you they didn't give a shit about you. Because um, ultimately, at the end of the day, none of you guys really matter. The number of users on Twitter, that metric in and of itself does not really matter. What actually makes some money is advertising. You know, whether or not advertisers um, are willing to give them money <laughs> to to be on Twitter and um, it could be a barren wasteland but as long as uh, advertiser giving him money he is you know technically speaking succeeding financially but you know you could have all the world's population on Twitter but if no advertisers wanting to advertise then well you haven't really succeeded either so um, yeah whether whether you see me leaving as a victory 
or not. It doesn't really matter. It's just whether or not advertisers want to be uh, affiliated with this. Anyway, it's, it's for this reason why I actually didn't think to leave Twitter uh, when Elon Musk acquired it. Uh, and I don't encourage anybody else to leave it, to be honest. Uh, if you have a use for Twitter, keep it. You know, we, I think we need some voice of reason <laughs> on this platform. Uh, but, but, you know, if you have personal reasons why you want to leave Twitter, then go ahead. For me, it, it is a personal reason. I, I don't like how much time I was spending on it. So that was ultimately the main reason why I got rid of it. Um, I, you know, I didn't love that, uh, that I was first constantly scrolling for Ukraine news and now constantly scrolling for whatever news, right? And uh, let me just say, was I found it very obnoxious that my Twitter feed was just constantly Elon Musk all the time. Like I had never, I never had that before. But now that he's acquired it, he's somehow made himself always at the top of my feed. You know, what the hell? <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of obnoxious. So anyway, I got rid of it. That's it.